A team of scientists has just made a discovery on Mars that could change the course of history forever. What they have uncovered on the Red Planet is beyond anything we could have ever imagined, and the implications are nothing short of catastrophic. Prepare to have your world turned upside down as we delve into this shocking new development that could spell doom for the future of humanity. Are you ready for the truth? The reddish, rusty hue of Mars and its two peculiar moons make it the fourth planet from the Sun. Our solar system's red planet is a frigid, desert world. The dusty, dead planet has a very thin atmosphere but is anything but uninteresting. Extreme dust storms can cover the entire planet. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can condense directly into snow or frost. And Mars quakes, the Martian equivalent of an earthquake, are a common occurrence. As a result, NASA Science reports that this small red rock remains one of the most examined bodies in the solar system. The Romans appropriately gave their god of battle to the planet they dubbed the Red Planet because it's blood-red hue. In reality, the ancient Greeks, who also called the planet after their god of war Ares, were the inspiration for the Romans. Names for the planet were often chosen because of its hue by various cultures. The Egyptians called it Erdesher, which means the Red One, and ancient Chinese astronomers called it the Fire Star. Since Mars has such a thin atmosphere and it is so cold, it is highly unlikely that liquid water could survive there for very long. Some scientists believe that hydrogen detected from orbit in this region indicates saline salts, but others are skeptical that features called repeating slope lanae have bursts of brackish water flowing on the surface. This desert world is just half as wide as Earth, yet it has the same quantity of dry terrain. Mars has the deepest and longest valley in the solar system, as well as the highest mountain. The 17-mile-high Olympus Mons is the tallest mountain on Mars. The six-mile-deep Valles Marineris Valley System, named for the Mariner 9 probe that discovered it in 1971, stretches east to west for about 2,500 miles, or about one-fifth of the distance around Mars and close to the width of Australia. Rifting of the crust due to stretching is thought to be the primary mechanism behind the formation of the Valles Marineris. The system's individual canyons can reach widths of up to 60 miles. In the middle of the Valles Marineris, in a region up to 370 miles wide, the canyons converge. Layered sediments within the canyons and large channels emerging from their mouths are also indicators that water may have formerly flowed through the canyons. One of the largest volcanoes in the solar system is located on Mars and is called Olympus Mons. The enormous volcano has a diameter of over 370 miles, making it large enough to encompass the whole state of New Mexico. Like the Hawaiian volcanoes, Olympus Mons was formed by lava flows that traveled great distances before hardening as a shield volcano. Large flat plains covered in hardened lava can be found alongside smaller, steep-sided cones on Mars. It's possible that the planet still has the occasional modest outburst. Liquid water may have recently flowed across Mars's surface as evidenced by the presence of channels, valleys, and gullies. Some channels can be 2,000 kilometers long and 1,200 kilometers wide. It's possible that there's water hiding in the crevices and pores of the Earth. It was hypothesized in a 2018 scientific study that subsurface salt water on Mars could store enough oxygen to sustain microorganisms. However, the concentration of oxygen is sensitive to both temperature and pressure, and the former fluctuates on Mars due to the planet's oblique rotation. There are several low-lying, featureless planes across Mars. Perhaps because water once flowed across the surface of Mars, its lowest northern planes are among the flattest and smoothest places in the solar system. Generally speaking, the northern hemisphere is at a lower elevation than the southern hemisphere, which could mean that the crust is thinner in the north. Perhaps a massive impact occurred soon after Mars's birth, causing this northern and southern disparity. The age of the Martian surface has a significant impact on the distribution of craters across the red planet. There are far more craters in the southern hemisphere since it is older. The largest crater on the planet is a 1,400-mile-wide Hellas Planitia in the southern hemisphere. Small numbers of craters on some volcanoes are indicative of recent eruptions that filled in older craters with lava. Debris deposits around certain craters seem like solidified mud flows, which could be an indication that the impactor struck water or ice below the surface. Under the frozen surface of Planum Austral in 2018, the European Space Agency's Mars Express probe identified a potential slurry of water and grains. There have been stories that refer to it as a lake, though it's not clear how much regolith is actually submerged. About 12.4 miles in circumference, this body of water is large. Its subterranean setting is reminiscent of other lakes that have been identified to harbor microorganisms in Antarctica. Mars Express also spotted a massive icy region in Korolev Crater toward the end of the year. 
Since landing near Mars's equator in November 2018, NASA's InSight lander has been conducting an interior exploration of the red planet. Mars quakes are being measured and characterized by InSight, and the tilt of Mars is being monitored in real time by the mission team as they meticulously track the lander's position on the surface. InSight scientists, for instance, have recently speculated that the diameter of the planet's core ranges from 1,110 to 1,300 miles. According to InSight's findings, Mars's crust has an average thickness of between 14 and 45 miles, with the mantle making up the rest of the planet's bulk. The diameter of the Earth's core is around 4,400 miles, making it larger than Mars, and the thickness of the planet's mantle is approximately 1,800 miles. The typical thickness of Earth's continental crust is roughly 25 miles, while that of the oceanic crust is only about 5 miles. On both sides of Mars, large deposits of what look like stacked layers of water ice and dust can be seen in latitudes as low as roughly 80 degrees. These were most likely laid down gradually by the atmosphere. Caps of water ice that remain frozen throughout the year exist atop much of these stratified deposits in both hemispheres. In the colder months, extra frost peaks arise. These are made of dry ice or solid carbon dioxide that is condensed from atmospheric carbon dioxide gas. The hypothetical atmosphere of Mars consists of roughly 95% carbon dioxide. This frost can reach halfway to the equator at latitudes as low as 45 degrees in the middle of winter, extending all the way from the poles. A study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets claims that the dry ice layer is as fluffy as newly fallen snow. Science and Exploration on Mars Galileo Galilei used a telescope to study Mars for the first time in 1610. The polar ice caps of our globe were first spotted by astronomers in the following century. Some researchers in the 19th and 20th centuries, most notably Percival Lowell, thought they spotted a network of long, straight canals on Mars, suggesting the presence of an ancient civilization there. However, it turned out that these reports were misconstrued accounts of natural phenomena. Scientists have been given a unique opportunity to examine chunks of Mars without leaving Earth thanks to the numerous Martian pebbles that have landed here throughout the millennia. The 1996 study suggests that the Martian meteorite known as Allen Hills 84001 potentially contains small fossils and other evidence of Mars life, making it one of the most disputed discoveries. The interpretation of the authors of the now-famous 1996 study has been questioned by other scientists, but they stand by their decision. Organic molecules, the carbon-containing building blocks of life, could have developed on Mars through battery-like chemical processes, according to a different meteorite research published in 2018. The U.S. sent three robotic spacecraft, Mariner 4 in 1964 and Mariners 6 and 7 in 1969, to Mars to study the red planet. Early missions to Mars found nothing resembling the life or advanced civilizations that dreamers like Lowell had dreamt existed there. In 1971, Mariner 9 mapped almost 80% of Mars' surface and made discoveries including the planet's volcanoes and large gorges. Many Soviet spacecraft aimed at the red planet in the 1960s and 70s were doomed to fail. Although Mars 2 1971 and Mars 3 1971 functioned normally, they were unable to create a surface map because of dust storms. In 1976, NASA's Viking 1 lander became the first spacecraft to successfully land on Mars. Six weeks later, its counterpart, Viking 2, landed in a different part of Mars. Close-up images of the Martian surface were taken by the Viking landers, but they revealed little in the way of signs of life. However, there is some disagreement about this. Gil Levin, who led the Vikings' labeled release life detection experiment, has always insisted that the rovers discovered signs of microbial metabolism on Mars. The Mars Pathfinder lander and the Mars Global Surveyor Orbiter, both launched by NASA in 1996, were the next spacecraft to successfully reach Mars. For 95 Earth days, a tiny robot dubbed Sojourner, aboard Pathfinder, called the first wheeled rover ever to explore the surface of another planet, rolled across the surface and analyzed rocks. Water ice, largely within the upper three feet, was detected beneath the Martian surface by the Mars Odyssey orbiter, which was launched by NASA in 2001. Since the probe has reached its depth limit, it is still unclear whether or not there is more water below. Additionally, Curiosity has uncovered evidence of seasonal changes in atmospheric methane levels and discovered complex organic molecules. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which arrived in 2006, and MAVEN, Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution, which arrived in 2014, are two of NASA's other orbiters now studying Mars. Mars Express and the Trace Gas Orbiter are two spacecraft operated by the European Space Agency 
that are currently in orbit around Mars. India became the fourth nation in September 2014 when its Mars Orbiter mission successfully enters Mars orbit. NASA's Mars InSight lander touched down on the Red Planet in November. As mentioned above, InSight is largely using Mars quake measurements and characterization to learn about the interior structure and composition of Mars. The simple caching life-hunting Perseverance rover was launched by NASA in July 2020. In February 2021, the intrepid Perseverance arrived on the floor of Jezero Crater on Mars. Accompanied by the Ingenious Ingenuity, a miniature aircraft used to showcase new technologies. As of September 2021, Ingenuity had successfully completed over a dozen flights on Mars, proving the viability of airborne exploration of the Red Planet. Determined to complete its own scientific mission, the chopper, which weighed only four pounds, meticulously recorded its first flights. The large rover has already collected a number of samples, which will be included in a large cache that will be returned to Earth by a combined NASA-ESA effort as soon as 2031. Hope, the first Mars mission from the United Arab Emirates, and Tianwen-1, China's first completely homegrown Mars attempt, both launched in July 2020. In February of 2021, the Hope Orbiter landed on Mars to begin its investigation of the Red Planet's climate, weather, and atmosphere. Tianwen-1, a multi-part spacecraft consisting of an orbiter, lander, and rover, also entered Mars orbit. A few months later in May, the landed component finally made it to the ground. Zhu Rong, the Tianwen-1 rover, rolled down the ramp of the landing platform and onto the Martian surface shortly after. The European Space Agency is also developing the Rosalind Franklin rover for Mars, formerly known as the ExoMars rover. The rover is part of a larger European effort to investigate Mars from the ground up. There have been multiple setbacks, thus it is doubtful that the program will finally begin in 2028. That's all for the video. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.